Just three years after signing the Federal Reserve into existence, President Woodrow Wilson made the following statement. I am a most unhappy man. I have unwittingly ruined my country. A great industrial nation is controlled by a system of credit. Our system of credit is privately concentrated. The growth of the nation, therefore, and all our activities are in the hands of a few men. We have come to be one of the worst ruled, one of the most completely controlled and dominated governments in the world. No longer a government by free opinion, no longer a government by conviction and vote of the majority, but a government by the opinion and the duress of a small group of dominant men. Today, more and more economists and financial analysts are warning that, as Woodrow Wilson feared, we have become an industrial nation controlled by our system of credit, and this is posing a serious danger to our nation. With overwhelming budget and trade deficits and mountains of money being printed to pay for them, the US now finds itself walking a fine line between economic superpower and a nation slowly sinking in a sea of debt. This legacy of debt in many ways can be traced back to the creation of the Federal Reserve in 1913. I don't think most people understand where money comes from. Even, I, you can talk to a senator and a congressman and say, you know, where does the money come? I don't, I don't think they know. As, uh, when the U.S. government needs money, they, they don't issue money, they issue bonds, uh, treasury bonds. The Federal Reserve then takes in the bonds and writes a check out against it. it. Money is created out of thin air. The idea was sold to the American people and to the Senate and the Congress that we ought to have a Federal Reserve System in 1913. So we got the Federal Reserve System. There's no constitutional authority for it, so it was set up to look like a private institution. And it's funny, a lot of people say the Federal Reserve is really a private bank masquerading as a government agency, when it's just the opposite. It's actually a government agency that was set up to look like a private bank to evade the constitutional restriction. The arguments on which the central bank was uh, sold to the American people was that it could be used to uh, prevent uh, market crashes, uh, fluctuations in uh, in markets and uh, recessions and depressions. But since its formation, uh, early in the 20th century, we've actually had more recessions and depressions, if you will, in the United States uh, than in the previous 100 years. Since the Federal Reserve was created in 1913, the purchasing power of the dollar has dropped about 95%. Uh, I remember even as a kid buying loaves of bread for, for a dime, ice cream cones for three cents or five cents and so forth. It's, uh, you could buy a, a, a five or six course dinner for, for a dollar in New York. And I remember, I, I can, in my life I can see what's happened to the purchasing power of the dollar. It's just been destroyed. And to me it's immoral. Uh, for, for people who are uh, savers, uh, who, people who saved their entire lives, to find that the, the purchasing power of what they saved is worth nothing. I've heard so many times that the Federal Reserve would never let a deflation happen in this country, and the Federal Reserve would never let this or that. And w what we do is give too much credit to the Federal Reserve. Uh, the Federal Reserve sets interest rates. Really? Well then why did they let the prime rate get to 20 percent in 1980? Do you think any politician in the country wanted a prime rate of 20 percent? And yet that's what we had, despite everything the Federal Reserve did to try to change that, to keep the, the uh, interest rates down. And when the time comes, the bottom can fall out no matter what the Federal Reserve is doing. The Federal Reserve system, uh, as it's presented to the public today, is neither federal, because it's not part of the government, uh, and it's not a reserve system. So it's not federal and it's not a reserve bank. Uh, it has very well-defined objectives, uh, and those objectives actually have very little to do with uh, the prosperity and the welfare of the American people. The history of paper currencies, currencies are, they all end up museum pieces, none of them have ever lasted. So if you would uh, ask me, what would you leave your, your great, great grandkids, say 100 years from now or 75 years from now, uh, the only answer I would give you is, is, is gold. Uh, gold will be uh, uh, money, it'll be uh, an item of value anytime you want to, as far as you can look into the future. There's nothing else I can say that about. Clearly, the creation of the Federal Reserve led to more and more dollars being printed, 
with those dollars rapidly declining in value. However, from 1913 until 1971, the dollar was still backed in part by US gold reserves. Then came 1971, when President Richard Nixon was faced with this reality. The US had printed up and spent far more dollars around the world than it could possibly back by gold. That brings us to our second key historical factor. 